In the heart of the Caribbean, on the southeastern coast of Jamaica, lay Port Royal. This city, with its strategic location, was destined to become one of the most infamous places in the New World. Founded in 1518, this bustling port city was a jewel in the crown of the British Empire. It quickly grew in importance, attracting settlers, traders, and adventurers from all over the world. By the late 17th century, it had become a thriving hub of trade and commerce. The docks were always busy, with ships arriving and departing, carrying goods from distant lands. Ships laden with sugar, slaves, and silver poured into its harbour. The wealth generated from these goods made Port Royal one of the richest cities in the Caribbean. Merchants, pirates, and privateers rubbed shoulders in its crowded streets. The city was a melting pot of different cultures and backgrounds, each contributing to its unique character. Port Royal was renowned for its wealth. The opulence of its residents was evident in their lavish homes and extravagant lifestyles. It was also notorious for its vice. The city was filled with taverns, gambling dens and brothels, all operating openly and catering to the desires of its inhabitants. Taverns, gambling dens and brothels operated openly. These establishments were frequented by sailors, traders and adventurers looking to spend their newfound wealth. Drunken brawls and duels were commonplace. The streets of Port Royal were often scenes of chaos and violence, adding to its notorious reputation. Stories of its debauchery reached across the Atlantic. News of the city's wild and lawless nature spread far and wide, attracting even more adventurers and fortune seekers. Many called it the wickedest city in the West Indies. Its reputation for vice and excess was unmatched, making it a place of both fascination and fear. Despite its reputation, Port Royal played a vital role in the region. It was a crucial trade hub, connecting the Caribbean with Europe and the Americas. It served as a base for English privateers who preyed on Spanish ships. These privateers were sanctioned by the British Crown, adding a layer of legitimacy to their actions. It was a major centre for the slave trade that fuelled the New World's plantation economy. The human cost of this trade was immense, with countless lives affected by the brutal system. Port Royal, though morally ambiguous, was a linchpin in the global trade network of the 17th century. Its influence extended far beyond the Caribbean, impacting economies around the world. The city's prosperity, however, was built on shaky foundations, literally. The very ground it stood on was unstable, a fact that would have dire consequences. Port Royal sat on a sand spit, a narrow strip of land vulnerable to the sea. This geographical fragility made the city particularly susceptible to natural disasters. This geographical fragility would prove disastrous when the earth decided to move. The city's fate was sealed by a catastrophic earthquake, forever changing its place in history. On the morning of June 7th, 1692, disaster struck Port Royal. At approximately 11.43 a.m., a massive earthquake ripped through the city. The ground heaved and shook with terrifying force. Buildings swayed violently. Walls crumbled. The earthquake's magnitude, estimated to be between 7.5 and 8.5 on the Richter scale, unleashed its fury upon the unsuspecting city. The epicenter lay just offshore, amplifying the destruction. The cause was a sudden slippage along the Enriquillo Plantan Garden Fault, a major tectonic boundary that runs through the Caribbean. The initial shock lasted for several minutes, an eternity for those caught in its relentless grip. Panic gripped the city as the very ground beneath their feet turned traitor. People were thrown off their feet. The air filled with the deafening roar of collapsing buildings and the screams of the terrified. The wickedest city was facing the wrath of nature's fury. This was only the beginning of the horror. 
The earthquake was merely a prelude to a cascade of catastrophic events that would forever etch this day in history. The earthquake's impact on Port Royal was immediate and catastrophic. Buildings, once symbols of prosperity, were reduced to rubble and dust. The shaking liquefied the sandy ground, causing structures to sink deep into the earth. The city's wharves and docks, bustling with activity only moments before, collapsed into the harbour. Eyewitness accounts described the scene as apocalyptic and terrifying. The earth opened up, swallowing buildings and people whole. The streets were littered with debris, the air thick with dust and the smell of death. Those who survived the initial tremors found themselves trapped amidst the ruins. The exact number of casualties remains unknown, but it is estimated that over 2,000 people perished in the earthquake. The dead included wealthy merchants, enslaved Africans and notorious pirates, all united in death by this indiscriminate disaster. The city that had once pulsed with life was now a graveyard. But the horrors of that day were far from over. The earthquake had triggered another deadly threat lurking just beneath the waves. Section 4 the tsunami's wrath, a wall of water engulfing the harbour. This chapter delves into the terrifying power of nature as the sea turned into an unstoppable force of destruction. As the earth settled, the sea receded from the harbour, an ominous sign of the impending doom. The sudden retreat of the ocean was a harbinger of the disaster that was about to unfold, leaving the harbour eerily empty and silent. Minutes later, a series of massive waves, triggered by the seismic upheaval, crashed into Port Royal. The waves, driven by the immense energy released from the earthquake, surged forward with relentless force. These tsunamis, some reaching heights of over 30 feet, swept over the shattered city, completing the work of destruction. The towering walls of water obliterated everything in their path, leaving no structure untouched. Ships anchored in the harbour were tossed about like toys. The once mighty vessels were now at the mercy of the waves, their anchors useless against the sheer power of the tsunami. Some were carried far inland, deposited in the wreckage of the city. These ships, now stranded amidst the ruins, became part of the chaotic landscape of destruction. Others were smashed against the remaining buildings or dashed to pieces on the reefs. The relentless waves showed no mercy, breaking apart the ships as if they were mere twigs. The force of the water pulverized what little remained of Port Royal's once proud structures. The city, known for its grandeur, was reduced to rubble in a matter of moments. Those who had survived the earthquake now faced a watery grave. The survivors, already traumatized by the quake, found themselves battling against the overwhelming force of the tsunami. The towering waves swept people away, their screams swallowed by the roar of the ocean. The sheer volume of water and the speed of the waves made escape nearly impossible. The tsunami carried debris, bodies, and even cannons far inland leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. The once bustling harbour was now a scene of chaos, with debris scattered everywhere. The harbour, once a forest of masts, was now a churning cauldron of wreckage. The ships that once symbolised trade and prosperity were now part of the devastation. When the waters finally receded, they left behind a scene of utter desolation. The once vibrant port was now a ghostly landscape, marked by the scars of the tsunami. Port Royal, the vibrant heart of the Caribbean, was gone, swallowed by the sea and buried beneath the sand. The city that once thrived with life and activity was now a silent testament to the power of nature. Section 5. The Aftermath. A city in ruins, a world transformed. In the aftermath of the earthquake and tsunami, Port Royal lay in ruins. The once bustling hub of commerce and culture was now a desolate landscape, a shadow of its former self. The once proud city was reduced to a wasteland of rubble and mud. 
Streets that had been filled with merchants and sailors were now unrecognizable, buried under debris. The stench of death hung heavy in the air as survivors, many injured and traumatized, emerged from the wreckage. Their faces told stories of unimaginable horror and loss. The disaster had immediate and far-reaching consequences. Families were torn apart, homes were lost, and the very fabric of the community was shattered. The loss of life was staggering. Thousands perished in the disaster, their lives cut short in an instant. The sheer scale of the tragedy was overwhelming. The destruction of Port Royal's infrastructure crippled trade in the region. The port, once a vital artery of commerce, was now inoperable, its docks and warehouses in ruins. The economic impact reverberated across the British Empire. Trade routes were disrupted and the flow of goods and wealth was severely hampered. The disaster also had profound social and cultural ramifications. Communities were left to pick up the pieces, mourning their dead and trying to rebuild their lives. The destruction of Port Royal, a city known for its wickedness, was interpreted by some as divine retribution. Religious leaders saw it as a punishment for the city's sins. The earthquake became a morality tale, a stark reminder of the fleeting nature of earthly possessions and the perils of sin. It was a lesson in humility and the fragility of human endeavors. The catastrophic events of June 7, 1692, forever altered the course of Jamaican history. The island's trajectory was changed in a single devastating moment. Port Royal, though partially rebuilt, never regained its former glory. The scars of the disaster were too deep and the city could not reclaim its past prominence. The earthquake forced a shift in power and influence paving the way for the rise of Kingston, a town across the harbour, as Jamaica's new capital. Kingston grew and flourished, becoming the new centre of trade and governance, a testament to resilience and renewal.